Every bank has a federal funds account with the Federal Reserve, which is where they keep their reserves. Through the normal course of operations, a bank will see its reserves fluctuate up and down depending on whether they see more deposits or more withdrawals on any given day. But every once in a while, their reserves will get depleted or fall below the reserve requirement set by the Fed. This could happen for all kinds of reasons, such as one of their larger corporate clients sending out paychecks to many employees, effectively withdrawing a huge amount of money all at once. Even before the Federal Reserve, when, the, when a bank ran into trouble like this and didn't have enough cash on hand to meet customer demands, they would reach out to another bank, which still had plenty of excess reserves, and they would borrow that money from them. Then, when things stabilized again for the borrowing bank, they would repay that loan, which would typically happen in a matter of days. The Federal Reserve centralized that system of interbank lending, and it facilitates this lending by allowing banks to lend to each other right from their accounts with the Federal Reserve. A bank could simply call up their local Fed bank and let them know to move some money from their account into another bank's account, quickly providing them with the liquidity they needed to meet that day's demands. The federal funds rate is the interest rate banks charge each other for short-term loans made from their federal funds account. The problem was that when a panic would start to spread, many banks would see their reserves depleted as customers withdrew their money in fear of a collapse. Not wanting to expose themselves to the risk, banks would refuse to lend to other troubled banks. Just when the system of interbank lending was needed the most, it would freeze up and escalate the severity of the crisis. When that happens, banks can borrow directly from the Federal Reserve's discount window. It was once a literal window at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York where bankers could come and acquire the loan, but these days it's all done electronically. The Federal Reserve can snap their fingers and create some new money and then lend it out to banks in crisis. It's not free though. The Fed charges interest on the loans, just like any other bank. The interest rate the Fed charges banks is called the discount rate. By providing emergency loans, the Fed is able to prevent a financial panic from bringing down bank after bank like dominoes as a run spreads through the financial system. Remember, these banks have plenty of assets in the form of loans they've made, which allow them to stay healthy and profitable if not for the panic driving withdrawals. These critical loans allow the banks to keep their doors open and weather the crisis, which means their depositors' money is a lot safer as a result. In order to ensure that they are indeed the last resort for a bank in trouble, the Fed typically sets the discount rate above the federal funds rate. Once again, the federal funds rate is the interest rate banks charge each other for short-term loans. It's common practice for banks to lend to each other as a way of smoothing out fluctuations in withdrawals and deposits. Under the Federal Reserve System, interbank lending is facilitated by the Fed to maintain stability of the system. However, if a bank is unable to secure a loan from another bank, they can turn to the Federal Reserve's discount window and borrow directly from the Fed to make sure this option is unappealing to banks, except in dire circumstances, the Fed sets their discount rate, the interest rate they charge on a loan, higher than the going federal funds rate. In this way, the discount rate is a bit of a misnomer. The name is not a reference to its value, but rather just some old timey lingo for interest rates that is stuck around in this context. Back in 1913, this was the primary tool the Fed had in staving off a financial crisis. By setting the required reserve ratio, they were instilling confidence in the system that would hopefully make panics less likely to occur. But when a panic did happen, this is how the Fed would be able to save the financial system and keep the economy from collapsing. 
as the lender of last resort, the Fed could prevent credit markets from freezing up by fulfilling the role themselves. The financial system was no longer dependent on the discretion of banking giants like JP Morgan. Now it had this government-backed super bank that could always rescue it in times of need.